Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a video today. Um, I've addressed this before and I'm going to address it again. Why is Arlene addressing these topics? It's because it's something that is real. It's something that goes on a lot in relationships and people are not in a position to feel as if they have a voice or they can talk about it without people looking at them and saying they're being possessive or they're overreacting. I'm here to talk to you about friends of the opposite sex. So we know that throughout our lives, we're going to meet people who are friends of the opposite sex. I, for one, am a girl that grew up without, without any sisters. So most of my friends coming up were males. I just got along with them. I didn't have any sort of, you know, um, I, I just wasn't uncomfortable around them. I didn't see male or men as, you know, uh, sexual, any sort of sexual uh, uh, intent with them. They were just guys because I was the only girl in an all-male household. So I had a very healthy perspective of males and and how they operate and how they relate so one thing I would tell you that Arlene is not a woman that's just jealous and insecure because when you grow up in a man a household full of males and you're the only girl then you understand how you have these relationships and how you interact and then of course all my brothers will bring over more of their friends they didn't bring home uh, females so I was always surrounded by my brothers or their friends so I have a very healthy perspective of males, how they operate, how they are. So I'm not one to just look at a man and say, well, you can't be friends with a man because something's got to be going on. Absolutely not. Now, with that being said, I also know the difference clearly when I see it being a sister of all males and being around males all throughout my life and throughout my military career, meeting men who you can definitely pick up on when it's there's a difference between what's platonic and what is not and so in that i've had male friends and but you know i've had to make set clear boundaries and things of that nature once i got into more serious relationship and understanding where you know understanding the, the changes that i have to make or adjustments that need to be made with my male friends so today i'm going to talk about a topic is understanding your position as an opposite sex friend this this thing that's going opposite sex friendship and the marketplace mentality you have some people who are they are friends they have friends you're in a relationship with them a serious relationship with them or you are married to them and they have friends of the opposite sex and these friends however tend to have a mentality that they have some sort of a right they have a trump card in which they can override you they can override your relationship they can steer your husband your wife in any direction they please because they've been there for a long time I understand that they're friendships that's important and you cherish, but I need you to understand the difference, okay? I don't want you anymore to be sitting around there taking things and thinking, well, something must be wrong with me. We're living in a time where people no longer have respect for boundaries that are set in relationships. Understanding you are a male friend, you are a female friend, but understand your position changes dramatically once that man or that woman is in a serious relationship. And even then, even if that person is just their boyfriend, girlfriend, it is what it is. But I'm talking more about serious relationship in marriages where there are people who are calling themselves friends who are disrespecting relationships and doing it in the name of friendship in the name of being this is my brother this is just like a sister to me no sir no ma'am telling you as a sister who actually have a house full of brothers i can clearly tell the difference between when you're acting like a sister and when you're not i can clearly tell the difference between when you're acting like a brother and when you're not so guys one thing you have to realize the god that we serve does not share his platform or his space God has given us many relationships and many things for us to enjoy. We have the relationships of our family, our parents, you know, family, parents, loved ones, siblings. You have uh, relationships where you have a husband, a wife, a companion. He's given us wonderful things to enjoy in our life. We have friends 
all that good stuff. However, one thing that he says, you shall serve no other gods other than me. Okay, gods is not necessarily saying you're going to serve Buddha or Hare Krishna or Allah, whoever it is. Gods can be that when they're talking about deities, but gods is anything that you put before God. You understand that? So God is not going to share his platform. He is God. I am a jealous God. That is what it says in the word. So even God, there's a specific place that he says, hey, this space is only for me and for me only. And so understand that we are made in his likeness and his image. So there is nothing wrong with you having a set place that is only for you and for no one else. This is a platform. This is a space that is shared by no one else. Where is this platform and this space, ladies and gentlemen? This platform and this place is within the heart of your mate. There's a place and a platform within that man, within that woman that belongs only to you. No one else should be loitering there. No one else should have access to that person but you. How do you know when a person have access or when you have too much access or when you're giving too much access? I'm going to tell you, when you put these male friends or females before you, your spouse. This male or female friend is the first one you go to with your problems. This is a person that you share things with. A lot of times they know stuff before your spouse knows stuff. This is a person that you're going to about your spouse, about your significant others. You're sharing details about what bothers you about your spouse, what bothers you about your significant other with this person, okay, without your spouse or your significant other being there. So your friend who is already going to be partially biased to you is going only here in your side, only here in your perspective. And I'm going to tell you that whatever, whatever, um, advice that they're going to give you is not sound advice. How's it not sound advice? It's not sound advice because you are not present. It's not sound advice because your spouse is not present. Your significant other is not present. And that's what makes it wrong. So when you're giving advice, you're giving faulty advice, ladies and gentlemen, because you have not heard her story. You have not heard his story. I'm going to go on and tell you a little more further. What is the place that's not for you. The place where you are now pouring into your friend and telling your friend about what is lacking in your relationship and your friend is now telling you, the friend of the opposite sex is telling you how you are not lacking. They're building you up. They're telling you things that your husband doesn't tell you or your significant others don't tell you. You are telling them things about your wife and they're going to tell you and, and build you up and tell you things that your wife is not telling you. That's not it. You see, before they had a boyfriend or a girlfriend or before they were married, you know, your male friend, your female friend come up to you and y'all going to talk to each other and laugh and talk and y'all can give each other advice. But once there is someone else, there becomes what you we need to have is discretion and you need to have wisdom, okay? Because you can't just be saying and talking and just having that type of access to that person anymore because there's someone else there. And so when you have this platform, this place, in that man's heart, this place in this woman's heart, where you feel like you can, you're going to go to them to share your deepest thoughts in the sense of the things that's bothering you. The first thing that's come to your mind is let me call my friend before you call your lady, before you call the, the, the man you are dating. Something is not right there. And what it is, you have a bond with this person that you need to change. The first thing that should be in your mind on certain things is your mate to share certain things. Not only that, guys, sometimes even in relationships, the man may share the same thing with you that he shares with his wife. Y'all know the same things at the same time. He's trying to get advice from you. She's trying to get advice from you. And now she has to try to decide between which two of the advice that she heard is better. You understand? So that's what I'm saying, that there's a space and a place that should never be. You should never be as a friend, as a male friend or a female friend. Also, as a friend, a true friend, you will always redirect that man or that woman to their wife or their husband or their significant other. Secondly, 
as a hus as a friend to that husband or wife who has you know they have a spouse you should already be ready to disqualify yourself from the race when you are truly a friend you should not be a friend that's ready to go head to head and toe to toe with that man's wife or with that uh, man's uh, or that woman's husband. You should be ready to disqualify yourself, especially when they are married or when they're in a, a relationship that is, is very serious. If it's causing problems for whatever reason, sometimes even if you're not even, you know, you're not a bad friend, but you got to be ready to disqualify yourself. That means you step out the picture, my friend. When you a female friend or male friend, and you and you want to go and you 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 ready to go toe to toe with that man or that woman over your friend? Come on. Sometimes it's painful because you do have women who they are just jealous. They just obnoxious. You do have men that's just jealous and obnoxious. You're truly just a friend. There's nothing there, but this person is just. They feel this way about you. But nevertheless, even if you are that type of friend, you have to be willing to step out of the picture, disqualify yourself, and just be a friend from a distance. You understand that? When you are ready to go head to head with them over your friend, you're not a friend. You're not just a friend. You have to respect that man's marriage. You have to respect that woman's marriage, even if it hurts you. Because guess what? As a sister and as a brother, even we have to step out of relationships. Sometimes we may not like whoever our family is with. But guess what? <laughs> That's who they with. And you got to step out of that. So if you got to do that with your blood, realize you better be able to do that with your friend. Another thing also, you have female friends or male friends who feel like they can say whatever they want to say about your spouse in your presence. Talk about them any old type of way. Don't address them properly. Have things that they want to say. And you as a spouse just sit there and don't say anything. You as a significant other, don't say anything. You have to realize the difference between when you are being a friend and when you are being a foe. The markets, the market mentality that I talk about here is just what I'm just what I mean. The market. You go to the market, it's open to everybody. You can go in there, you can feel the fruits, touch the fruit, bite the fruit. If you get up, go use the bathroom, go there when they have sales, go there when whatever. You can loiter, you can do nothing, you can just be there because it's the market. And a lot of times you have people who don't have respect for relationships. They don't have respect for marriages. They don't have that type of respect anymore. So they feel because they were there from the start and they were there all along, I have a right to to be there unless he tell me it ain't gonna be and unless she tell me no my friend no 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 you have to be very careful in those lines that you are not drawing that things don't get modeled you understand that if you're a friend then you be a friend but as a friend and i'm going to tell you from a christian perspective you must look at things from a godly standpoint have a godly mindset about it you understand that even god himself has a space that is only for him and so you must also realize that there's a space in that relationship that is only for that man and that woman and you no longer fit you cannot continue to be the co-pilot in her life the co-pilot in his life You've got to step back. You want to be a friend, you're going to be an ally of the relationship. If you want to be a friend, you have to be a friend of the relationship as well. You cannot be putting things in that man or woman's head to leave their husband, their wife, their significant other. You are putting yourself in a place that this woman or this man has to prove themselves to you. And show that you, you know, you got to go through, pass through the fire with these male friends and female friends. No, when you have a man or a woman in your life, this is who you have selected to spend the rest of your life with. This is a person that you plan on spending the rest of your life with. Then automatically they default to a position that surpasses that of your male friend or your female friend. You have to understand that you can have these friendships, right? But there should be a healthy balance. 
Your friend should never be getting more FaceTime. That man, your husband, should not be giving another woman more of his time than you. Another man, more of her time. That he is the first person she's reaching out to. She's reaching out for. You are the first person. You're the last person there texting you and talking to you at different type of different hours of the night. They have no boundaries set. When you are a friend, you get boundaries. You get boundaries. And you have to respect those boundaries. You see, sometimes you got to think someone may come to you, that husband and that wife or that friend who's married to somebody else, and they're calling your man and they're calling your lady or your wife or your husband and telling them how they're not satisfied in their relationship and what that man is not doing for them and what this woman is not doing for him. But understand this, a part of the problem is the fact that you are not all the way, you are not all the way connected to your woman. You see, the time that you spend trying to get advice from another man is the time you can spend trying to understand your man. Now, understand that sometimes your male or female friend can say, hey, listen, this is what I think, blah, blah, blah. But always keep in mind, you cannot really give advice from one perspective. But the thing about it is, if you are spending most of your day texting and talking to another man, texting and talking to another woman, that is a part of the problem that you're going to have with your spouse. And you have to understand that in the supernatural, in the in the atmosphere, what you put out is what you're going to get. You see, if your husband or your wife seems far away from you, if you are spending your time in the phone talking to another woman, no matter how innocent you may think it is, or spending your time in the phone going to another man on, on, uh, trying to get advice about your husband or your mate, no matter how innocent it is, you are sowing seeds so you have your heart and your mind set on another man supposedly to help you that's your best friend or your friend or he's your best friend your female you know your female friend what's going to happen is you're setting seats where your mate will never get close to you he or she may never know how much you're talking to this other person but in the heavens it's out there so when you're in the phone, spending time talking to another man, stirring up strife in another woman's house, in your phone, talking to another woman, stirring up strife in your home, understand that you are never going to get the manifestations of a relationship that you want. As long as you are connected to another person, you are not going to get the man that that woman is complaining to you about. He's never going to get any closer to that woman. As long as that woman is connected to you in the guise of a friend or saying she's a friend as long as she's going to you first she'll never get the man she'll never get what she desires from her husband or her mate as long as that woman is coming to you first wanting to get what she needs he she is never going to get what she needs from her husband as long as he is coming to you for advice he's never going to get what he needs from his wife because the connection is you yes ma'am yes sir the Bible sets things in order. The Bible says, God talks about it. Husband and wife, wife, submit to your own husband, your own husband in everything, in everything. It says, wives, husbands, love your wife. Treat your wife the way you want to be treated. It talks about children respecting your parents. It talks about the elders respect, uh, teaching the younger and respect to the elderly. There is always something that is consistent with order in relationships. And a lot of times what is happening, guys, there's no order. There's no order. There's a marketplace mentality. And when you as a, as a man or a woman require of your mate to have, hey, I don't mind you having a friend, but set boundaries here. We can't all be at the head table together. That person's going to make you feel like there's something wrong with you. Oh, this is, oh, something's wrong. Why can't I have this friend? Why can't I whatever? And when that happens, you are going to have to make a choice as far as whether or not you're willing to just live with the buffet style relationship uh, uh, strategies or way of living, or if you're willing to walk away from that. Anyone that God is going to give to you is going to be a man or woman who has wisdom, discernment, and knowledge, okay? A person who is going to be able to have a perfect balance between friendship and, 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 and your relationship. And they're always going to put you first. They're always going to put you first. 
when someone struggles with that, hey, you, you got some tough decisions to make. Now, I can't tell you what to do in your marriage. But what I'm trying to tell you is there's a lot of disrespect that's going on. And it's supposed to be okay because this is my friend. No, you're disrespectful. This is, there's a lot of marketplace mentality. Like I've been here, I can come up in here if I want to. No, you cannot. There's a place, there's a time and a place for everything. You understand that? That husband, that wife, that significant other that you're in a serious relationship with will always put you first. Your comfort should come first. Your peace of mind should come first. And the bottom line is, if it gets down to it, that person is willing to set, if it, if it really come down to it, and hopefully it should never come down to that. But if it came down to it that you as a man, you as a man or a woman who is in a relationship with someone and that person is not comfortable with this friend, you have to be in a place that you are willing to set that friendship aside for the sake of your husband or your wife or that person you plan to marry. That's the priority that your spouse should have over your friend. If your friend or you, or if you're the friend, whatever it is, if they are in a happy relationship and they're truly in a happy, healthy relationship with their husband or their wives, I'm trying to tell you that they don't have time to text and talk to you all day long because they will be giving and investing that time into their spouse, not you. A lot of times you find that some of these individuals are in relationships where their spouse is not even giving them the time of day, but you are, and they're drawn to that. And I'm sorry if you don't share blood with this person, there is always room for error. Be able to use discretion and know the difference. A true friend, male or female, will be able to discern and know, you know what, we texting too much or we talking too much. Your wife, your husband, your significant other should come to mind. There should never be a platform where they feel comfortable talking about your husband or your wife or your significant other in any insignificant way, in any way that is disrespectful. When that person can do that, it is because in their mind they feel and they believe that they have a certain kind of access to you and a certain place in your heart that they own that gives them the right and makes them feel comfortable in cutting down, undermining, uh, uh, and, and, and talking about your spouse, your significant other in a way that is disrespectful because they feel that what they have with you surpasses what you have with your spouse or your significant other. These are things that you must correct. These are not things that you laugh it off, joke it off, say it's nothing. No, no, no. Because God has put that man or woman in your life for a reason. And one thing that you must do as a wife is to always honor your husband. You honor him and you submit to him in all things. That means he's your first go-to for everything. Men, your wife, you are to honor her. You are to love her the way that God loves the church. That means you can't have the market, the buffet line going where there's another woman, another person that can step in and diss your wife, diss your lady. And guys, I'm going to tell you this. Don't say, oh, well, he's just my boyfriend. She's just my girlfriend. We're just dating. Oh, she's just my fiance. He's my fiance. It'll get better when we get married. No, it won't. Pay attention to what you see now. Pay attention to the things that you see now. There needs to get back to the place of respect. We're living in a society where anything goes. You're living in a society where if your wife don't please you, replace her. If your husband don't please you, replace him. If 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 you, you're not happy, you can cheat. Uh, if you want more than one, you can have two or three. That is the society that we live in. And now this is another thing that the enemy comes in with friends. 
Now understand there's a difference between good friends and bad friends or healthy friendships and toxic friendships. So there's another way the enemy comes in trying to mess up things that's actually legitimate friendships. But then you have some friends who their hearts, you see, sometimes some of these friends, guys, are people that once slept together and you don't know. Hmm. <laughs> They had something going on and they just decided to be friends or they've had an attraction to that person and it just never panned out and they decided to be friends. So sometimes these friendships, these friendships where you having problems and, and they're, it's sometimes there's something there and the very least what's not there is respect for the both of you. Guys, let's clean up these areas. Let's clean this stuff up. Let's make it right where you all can agree and be on the same page. It doesn't necessarily mean you got to get rid of your friends, but be prepared to. Because you find some friends, you see, sometimes your discernment is not on. You need to get your discernment kicking in so you can see what's there. You can see what's there. There's certain things that maybe your husband can pick up on that you're not seeing because he, this man's your friend. You don't see what he's seeing. There's certain things that your wife can see and pick up on that you don't because, man, this is my friend. At the same time, there are some husbands and wives that's just jealous, just insanely jealous and don't want you to be around nobody. They don't want you around your family. They don't want you around your mom and your daddy. I understand that. This video is not for those people. We're talking about people who have healthy mindsets and they don't have any problems. But we're talking about keeping these boundaries in place. Don't let the enemy come in and infiltrate, infiltrate your marriage. You know, there's so many, so many, so many, so many, so many stories of people who ended up having affairs with their friends, leaving their wives and their husband for their friends. And how did this happen? Because they were not careful. A lot of times, and even in affairs, a lot of times it wasn't intentional. You started as friends. Y'all were just cool. And what you did, because you just were seeing this person as a friend, you were not paying attention to the signs, to all the things, the indications, all the little red flags that were showing you are heading into a certain direction until you're already there. All right, guys, so this video is long, but I want you to understand that this is, I feel like this is very important because there's a lot of people who are in marriages and in relationships that you're going through this thing where you, you just got this person in your life that's a friend and they are just causing issues and they have the higher seat than you do as a husband or a wife. I'm going to tell you, I'm just that woman that listen. <laughs> You, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. I'm going to give you some time to correct it. But if you can't correct it, I got to go. I got to go. Because at the end of the day, guys, you got to realize there are men and women out there who understands that there must be boundaries. Who understands that everybody, we can't take everybody to the top no more. You understand? You may be on the third wrong. You may be on the fourth wrong. But at the top is going to be my spouse. My person that I'm about to spend the rest of my life life with this person is here and no matter what is going on this person is given all of your respect all of your mind in the sense of they are given all of you they get all of your attention they get all of your consideration they're given the highest echelon of that and then there's everyone else you understand that I'm not saying that in a bad or unhealthy way, guys. I'm not. I'm not saying that you forget about people. But what I'm telling you is your husband and your wife comes first. This person that you are in a serious relationship with, pay attention to what they're doing now. Because when you become wife, when you become husband, they're going to carry, they're going to come with that same stuff. Wait for what God has for you. You don't have to stay in these relationships. They call you jealous. They call you whatever. Okay, thank you. I just, I'll be jealous on my own. Thank you. You stay right where you're at. I'll stay right where I'm at. You understand that? And God will bring that man or woman who has that healthy balance, 
Who can, you have friends, y'all be good, and there's a balance. Nothing leaks into anything, and they're always willing to make the necessary corrections they need to make to preserve your relationship. Such people exist. You're looking at one. You're looking at one right here, honey. So there's more than me, and, and, and you can find it online. Don't accept the gutter mentality and the market mentality, guys. You deserve better and God only will give you his best. All right, guys, this is about 30 minutes. So I'm gone. I hope this has helped you. Bye.